says the word Katrina around the White House, but they don't need to. They're very mindful of that, and they want to show that the United States is putting significant resources here and, and doing it efficiently and competently. Competence, that is the word the president uses a lot with his team. Savannah Guthrie, stand by with me. Hear me here right one moment while we wait for the president. But when we talk about the relief workers on the ground, that is where uh, the rubber meets the road, their struggle to get supplies into Haiti. So let's go directly to WNBC's Tom Yamas on the Haiti-Dominican Republic border with the very latest. Tom. Good afternoon, Andrea. Right now, we are at the Central Command Center for the Dominican relief effort in the town of Himani. It's a border town with Haiti. Uh, I'm going to walk you through what, what this place looks like. This is a military base when it's not being used as a, as a relief post. These are people, different workers from the Dominican military, also American aid workers who are trying to get into Haiti as soon as possible. As we whip around, that green tent you see in the distance, that's actually a makeshift triage center. That's for any patients that come in from Haiti who can't make it to a Dominican hospital. They'll be treated right here on the scene. And finally, these yellow trucks, they're food trucks that are being driven into Port-au-Prince. Those trucks, each of them, are serving 10,000 meals per day in Port-au-Prince as we speak. Now, this uh, base is also being used by the American military now as well. It's a makeshift helipad, both for the Dominican government and for the American government as well. We actually had the opportunity to travel with the Dominican Air Force as they um, choppered in some uh, people from their uh, embassy, the Dominican Republic, uh, of the ambassador staff, and it was really truly amazing what we saw from 1,200 feet over Port-au-Prince. Uh, the destruction, you can see it all around us. Port-au-Prince really looks like a village of rubble. Uh, there are cliffs that have entire sides just completely wiped out. Uh, these structures, these homes have fallen on top of each other, and it, it really was quite a scene to see it from up there in the air. Uh, the helicopters are the best way to get in and out of Port-au-Prince right now, and uh, because of that, that's why the Dominicans are using them so well. Uh, it's my understanding that I think the, uh, the president is going to be speaking Soon, so we're going to pause for a moment and send it back to you, Andrew, in the studio. Tom, in terms of the ability to get through, once the uh, what we're talking about is nine to ten thousand American troops are going to be there, presumably by Monday. Is are helicopters the only way to get the relief supplies through, or how? What is the status of the roads uh, between? The entry it's the points. fastest way. It's the fastest way to get in right now. I was on the roads yesterday, and it's gridlock. It takes you hours to try to get into the center of Port-au-Prince, especially if you're coming from the Dominican border. And uh, the helicopters are the fastest way to come in and out, and that's why they're transporting patients who are the most in need. Joining me now live is John Elliott. He's a, a field director, an American, who's helping out here in the effort. He's been at the hospitals in the Dominican Republic, the border hospitals. What do they look like right now? Uh, they're overrun with patients. They're arriving every five minutes by ambulance and every every half hour by helicopter and there's just not enough medics and not enough medical attention. They desperately, desperately need supplies, gloves, surgical masks, x-ray equipment, uh, surgical thread. So our organization is trying to corral a lot of that and bring it here and also to Port-au-Prince. What, what kind of injuries are you seeing? Is it, is it broken bones? Is it uh, cardiac arrest? What kind of things are you seeing? Yeah, everything. Uh, severe lesions, uh, crush injuries, internal injuries, a lot of complications. And the biggest problem now is that they're languishing. They're not being treated for various reasons, medical equipment, and also there's some political things going on that's causing conflicts of authority. And it's slowing down the treatment of a lot of these patients. So unfortunately, some of them are languishing and dying. How would you describe the actual hospitals? Are patients actually outside of the hospital or are people actually all being treated? Yeah, they are being turned away at this moment. Uh, yesterday, they reached capacity and started turning away a lot of the vehicles and trucks. Today, they accepted about 10 ambulances, but people are lining the halls, makeshift ad hoc situations. We've got two per bed now in a lot of the rooms, and the rooms are two, just two victims two per bed? Two victims per bed, yes. Two victims per bed and three ch infants per bed. Uh, a lot of them are on the floor or outside. Okay, John Elliott from Atlanta helping out here in Haiti with the relief effort. Uh, Andrew, I'm going to send it back to you in the studio. That's the very latest from Himani. Tommy Amos, thank you very much. Uh